To me, it was four shifts of the service. It was the first part. I think Richard Smallwood and Ricky Dillard and um, Myron did a good job doing it. Then there was um, Shirley Caesar. It was Marva Sapp. The opera singers did a very, both opera singers did a very good job. Oh my God. And it's like, it was beautiful. Like, I wish they would have did the song that Aretha did. That would have that set the tone. That was a beautiful um, tribute to her. Because she was a big fan of opera. So, shout out goes out to those two opera singers. They did their thing. They did a phenomenal job. But my favorite part, uh, oh yeah, Ronald Osmond. Ronald I, you got me, he kind of like sung a little lullaby of Eyes on the Spur and kind of like put me to sleep. But I have the utmost respect for Ronald Osley because he did a lot within our community. He was a, he was a, he was a pillar of, um, of our sound, the choice sound as well. So, and the thing about it is he had to come up there and sing whatever, but he loved, he had so much love for Aretha. And you know, he's going through health problems himself. So I respect the fact that he did that, whatever. And I respect the fact that he did a good job. But my favorite part of the ceremony has to be Stevie Wonder when he um, did the Lord's Prayer. That really touched my heart. And that's when you knew, you know, everything was about to come to an end. Everything is shifted to, you know, it was about to come to an end. And it was a beauty, beautiful tribute to Miss Franklin because she means so much to him. Um, he was there when, you know, her and him and Jesse was there. And with Aretha, whatever, when she was about when she was about to die, so you know, that that meant a lot. Her foundation in Christ, whatever. I mean, Aretha meant a whole lot. So Stevie Wonder did a great job. He always do a great job. But the one that really stuck out to me the most, and she was the last person, was Jennifer Holliday. That was beautiful, because you already knew Aretha was going home to be with the Lord. That was beautiful. How she did that. That setup was was sick. I'm sorry. Like, shoot, I want her to do my funeral. That's how, you know what I'm saying? Because that, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well done. It was like a well done ser service for the queen. And Aretha, she going to always and forever be the queen of um, Queen of Soul. Elvis is the king of rock and roll, to be honest with you. He's, he's a prince of it because if it wasn't for a little Richard, he wouldn't be where he at. He wouldn't be where he was at today. And little Richard's still living. No, you know these days, little Richard got low. Whatever. You don't know say. I think you know. He don't. He ain't little Richard. Ain't little Richard no more. You feel? Me? He's Bishop Pimpleton now. So you know, I'm happy for little Richard. I mean, he's living his best life. You know. But um, my prayers goes out to the family of Richard Franklin. I, I can't say it no more. I can't say it enough. Um, please watch. Um, Black Girls Rock is going to be held on the 9th. It starts at 8 o'clock on Sunday, BET, BET Networks. If you got BET, that's cool. You got the app. Please check your local listings. It's going to be lit. It's going to, be, going to have the tribute of um, Aretha Franklin, Jenny Jackson, Mary J. Blige, and yeah, it's going to be off the chain. So let's talk about this Bobby Brown movie. Part one. As far as Bobby Brown goes, you know I'm a big fan. He is the king of R&B. Let's let's just let's just put that out there. He is the king of R&B. I'm going to see a close up. He is the king of R&B. I like new edition movie better because it's, it it gives you the genre of everybody. It's more. It was more lit. It was more. You know what I'm saying? Stories. You know, more tea to live by. I think that um, Bobby did a good job. I think Willie, I would think Willie the Great did an excellent job portraying Bobby. I think um, I forgot what's the name. The lady who played Whitney did a very good job, and Mikael Pfeiffer did a good job when when it came to his brother. He had his brother down to the T. What I will say, I wish they got in more detail on how that Bobby met Whitley, Whitney. Whitney. They made Whitney look like a fool in these streets. Whitney was, you know what I'm saying, doing vitamin, like she wasn't doing nothing at all. She was just, you know what I'm saying, getting high all day. And that was not the case. She was getting high. 
But let me tell you something, Whitney, I mean, Whitney was doing more jobs than Bobby was doing jobs. Let's be clear about that. She was having albums and stuff. Bobby didn't really have an album. The only thing that saved this black butt was being Mr. Brown. And Whitney, you know what I'm saying, she wasn't having that. Really, she really wasn't having that regards to that, putting her business out on Front Street. And it happened, unfortunately. They signed up for the contract. I mean, being Mr. Brown, that was the most Lydia sh Bobby Brown was the most Lydia show that I ever watched in my whole entire life. I used to, I still to this day watch being Mr. B I mean, being uncle, people say Mr. Brown, being Bobby Brown. That was a great show. I love that show. I'm telling you. But at the same token, I didn't like the show. It was a blessing as a curse because Bobby Christina had to experience all that, and she had to have her parents' business out in Front Street like that. And as a result of her parents bad decision that it was a demise unfortunately and that's going to be on part two tonight i think you know said the death of um bobby christine that that was that was that was the, that was the that was the worst i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and tonight we're gonna to see how that goes down bobby and the janet jackson situation whatever that was short-lived. You had my girl looking down in these streets, whatever. I think that Janet liked the Bobby, but Bobby was crazy. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, he went through a lot of stuff. He's seen a lot. His fr family and friends dropped dead, got shot, whatever. The case may be, whatever. I mean, and I really, really wish that him and um, he introduced the, Al the Alicia character a little bit better. She just like, Alicia was just like the little, the side girl on, the, on one of his homegirls, whatever. I wish she would have um, introduced who Alicia was before she became Mrs. Mrs. Brown. Int introduce that character. I mean, it's it's in your book, whatever. It's just like you know, say so I think you should have took some time to introduce certain things, whatever. So we, as an audience, whatever, will understand. Um, let's talk about the new edition piece. Bring that into the bring that into the scene as well. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like bits and pieces, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a dead going. It was like it, it would be a three a three part series. At least you explain your story. I wish it was a three day it was a three part series for real. Because it's like I feel as though you didn't have enough time to, you know what I'm saying, explain the situation. I'd rather be a three a three p a three three part series, whatever that's drawn out than a two p two part whatever. And I'm not, you know what I'm saying, just like push that. Y'all was focusing on the um the dancer part, but you didn't, you know what I'm saying, talk about the whole story. So we will understand what what Bobby Brown is saying. I think that Bobby Brown was, you know what I'm saying, was an underdog as well. Because, I mean, like I said, he brought the group together. He did a lot of stuff within the new edition part. We want to know, we want to get to know him a little bit better. And that's the thing. That's my only issue with the Bobby Brown story. I think the choreography, I think the acting was great, but I wish that they push out more about Bobby Brown. I mean, they're gonna talk about that Whitney death tonight, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna talk about it. And I mean, that's gonna be the the big part. But we want to talk about everything that lead to it. Let's talk about the Alicia um, Everett Brown part. Let's talk about that. You feel what I'm saying? Don't just have have my girl Whitney look dumb in these streets with her because she ain't she ain't gonna be able to defend herself. That's dumb as hell. That's crazy. So I'm looking forward to talk to you know what I'm saying to talk about part two. Um, as you both as you know that um I will be doing part two tomorrow, and talk about that situation. And lastly, um, what else? Oh, the child, the childish Gambino out the the um the song that he the video that he just dropped. A lot of people is buzzing about that. They think it's shade, whatever. But it's basically talking about what's going on. The Abiza Bank situation. She was sitting in the tree. Nobody really paying her no mind. They just basically just sit there and just watch what's going on. The um, Migos situation in peace, whatever. What they had was playing basketball. That is true. Um, Snoop Dogg, Diddy, you know, represent, I guess, the Jackson 5 dance or whatever. But the part that got me the most was was the Freddie O the Freddie O Santana when Beyonce was dressing um had the um t-shirt says rest in peace, um Fredo Santana. But what got me the most when is when the um X X Tassian situation the man was eating ice cream, and the two scoops is um chocolate and vanilla 
represent the life of um, Jose, X, I mean, better known as XX Tassian, how the ice cream melted. That represent his life. That really got me the most, whatever. That 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 everything, the video itself, and Whitney Houston with her eyes closed, and Michael Jackson with his eyes open. That meant that that. And that, I mean, everything else didn't matter, but Whitney Houston with her eyes closed and Michael Jackson with his eyes open and um, Snoop Dogg, Diddy, and Mick Mills and everybody was doing the Jackson Fire Steps, whatever. That meant something to me. I mean, I'll pay attention to that, whatever. Maybe I'll do another review on that, whatever. That 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 blew my mind a little bit. That, 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 that was a, that's a beautiful video. I'm telling you it is. Um... As far as XX Tassian, from what I know is he is having a baby boy. So, congratulations, rest in peace, um, XX Tassian. The John McCain funeral. Oh, yeah, Aretha Franklin funeral was eight hours, y'all. Eight hours. John McCain funeral was like two hours tops. <laughs> that meant something. Shout out goes out to um, Megan McCain, man. She really... <laughs> She really spoke the truth about the injustice of what's going on as far as the Trump um, administration. And, you know, and if I think about it, and here's my thing about it. If I and John McCain specifically said, I don't want anybody, I don't want Donald Trump at my funeral, but you're going to have Mike Pence to be at the funeral, the vice president. If I, if that was me, I, I want Lottie Dottie, everybody. I wouldn't want... I wouldn't want um, anybody from the Trump administration at my funeral. Nobody's involved. Nobody can I come. You'll be watching it on TV just like Donald did. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I feel about the situation. But Megan said the best, you know what I'm saying? Megan, I mean, America was always great. We don't understand that. We don't understand our greatness. And Mr. Farrakhan says that a lot. America is great. We just don't understand our greatness. And until we do, we're going we gonna to walk in darkness. And that's just the, that's the reality of the situation. John McCain, to be honest with you, John McCain is woke. He was a woke brother. Aretha was woke. I feel as though the two of the most prominent people died and they was woke. Both of them. They was conscious about everything. And I respect them. And I think America lost two two great people in my opinion but lastly i want to talk about this braxton situation i know a lot of people is going to step on a lot of people's toes but i really don't care td jake said something to them um about two seasons ago when they met with td jakes and one of the things that he said about the braxtons is this that some of them could be very selfish and I love the Braxes very dearly. I mean, I love their muses. I love them. I mean, they're my homegirls. Love them. But I think they're, some of them could be very selfish. I have respect for um, Tracy. And I have respect for um, Trina. Because, and Tawanda, because, you know what I'm saying, they understand the, the root of the problem. They really do. And Tony just tired. I'm going to say something to my sister Tamar. You did yourself injustice when you disrespected um, Ayana Benzant. I don't give a damn if her name is Rhonda, her name is Keisha, her name is Shimrock, you shagging the Bendigo. I don't give a care who they, who she is, who they is, who she is. You know what I'm saying? She changed people's lives. Whatever. Only it's not by herself. It's only by the gift of God. And sometimes getting, you know, getting wisdom and receiving wisdom is harsh. You know what I'm saying? Me watching Ayana Van Zandt on TV, it made me a better person. It really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff, what, go, what goes on in my life and what, I, and what progress that I needed to do in, all, in order to do the work. I think that she did not give the sister a chance to help her get to where she needed to be. The girl went on Twitter calling the girl by her, her government name and calling her evil. That hurt my feelings whatever because, you know, a lot of people want to, you know what I'm saying, get the help that they need to be better. And, you know, she reached out to her. She reached out to the whole family. 
I'm I'm really praying for the Braxton's family. I really am. I think that Tamar is very spoiled. And I don't care if it's a clapback. I really don't care. I think she's spoiled, in my opinion. I think she thinks a lot of stuff. I don't understand. And that leads me to my last thing. I understand why people have like this self entitlement issues. Nobody owes you nothing in this world. Nobody owes you anything. That's my that's my that's my um approach. Nobody owes you nothing. I see it within our black communities, I see it with everybody. They have this self entitlement issue. And they need some prayer and they need some deliverance on that. I think that Tamar is very selfish. And she don't wanna receive the help. And if she continue on doing what she doing, she's gonna be in it's gonna be she's gonna be doomed. And I don't want that for her. I really don't because I love Tamar. That's my girl. I really, I, I want her, I want her, I want her to be great, man. She's a great singer. She can go so far. And she push her mind and she open her mind. And stop being so dead going, um, think, thinking somebody owes her something. And somebody hurting her feelings. I think that her mother, I mean, Ayana said it best. Her mother's in the way. Sorry, Miss Evelyn. Her mother's in the way. And sometimes family, parents be in the way, whatever. And that's not cool. Sometimes people need to just tell people the truth, whatever, without having a safety net. And Miss Evelyn been a safety net for those girls for many years. And sometimes it's best to, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to move out the way so they can get the, receive the information that they need to be great. I'm going to be honest with you. When I lost my grandmother in 2014, that was the most hardest, um, hardest point of my life. It was beautiful because, I mean, I just found out I was pregnant and everything. But I was going through a whole lot of list of stuff, a, a list of things. And, you know, my grandma always had my back. But I didn't, you know what I'm saying, she tried to give me the tools, but, I mean, she she gave me the tools. Don't get it twisted. But sometimes I, I, needed, a, I needed a kick in the butt. And when my grandma died, when my daughter was born, whatever, I had received that kick in the butt. And I didn't like it, whatever, but at the same token, it made me better because it, because I have, at one point in time, I have like this self entitlement issue. Well, you supposed to do this for me. you supposed to do that for me. And that's never the case. It shouldn't be the case. You know, I'm going to teach my daughter the reality of life. I have to teach her that because I don't want her to go out in the street and receive it from the street, whatever. I want to teach her myself. So she, she go out in the streets, whatever. She's confident as hell. And she ain't going to, you know what I'm saying, she, she know right from wrong. And she's not going to follow into the clique. You know, I pray for Hollywood. I pray for everybody today. I hope everybody's touched by this video. And like I said, tomorrow I will be doing the um, part two preview of um, the Bobby Brown movie. I hope everybody have a beautiful day and be blessed.